Hey, show, we got news now. Uh, the new look uh, in the works for Main Street Confectionery, uh, Disneyland reopens. Uh, Dis- excuse me, Disneyland Resort is bringing a multi-year expansion. I'm assuming that the next yes. one would be. Uh, we got headline news, meetup trivia, and we've got two amazing guests joining us. All that and more in today's Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, <laughs> arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready. <laughs> for the Disney Parks Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. So glad that you were here. Uh, we're going to be getting to our special guest here in just a second. Uh, but I did want to let you know about a couple of things. One, if you have not caught the new uh, show that we're doing with Walt Disney, uh, former Walt Disney Imagineer Brian Collins, you really need to check it out. We had a great show last month. Each and every month, Brian's going to be joining us and talking about some of the most beloved attractions from around the world of Disney, including like uh, Jungle Cruise, World Showcase, The Great Movie Ride, and so many more. We're going to be recording a new show tomorrow So probably in the next week. So next week we'll have a brand new show with Brian. What's the name of the show, Tony? What are we calling it? Oh gosh, (laughs) you put me on the spot. Imagineering the magic. Imagineering the magic. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) That's it. Imagineering the magic. Yeah, we got a whole new logo and all that. That's gonna be great. Music uh, is coming. Music's coming. So check that out. That's gonna be great. We love that we've partnered with Brian, or I should say, Brian's partnered with us uh he is he is a wealth of knowledge he's got a ton of stories uh so that's going to be exciting and then uh secondly uh before i introduce our guests i want to tell you a little bit about where they're from they are uh two of the amazing travel planners from destinations to travel if you're planning on doing any travel as things start opening up this year or starting to plan for next year you definitely want to talk to our friends from destinations to travel uh we've partnered with them it's been an amazing partnership uh we have friends who are also uh providing some blog posts giving some of their knowledge through our blog Uh, but if you're planning on doing any kind of travel you want to definitely uh, talk to our friends at destinations to travel now uh, normally i would say you fill out the short form over at disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash travel but for this show i want to let our friends introduce themselves and that way if you would like to get in touch with them uh, then you can reach out to them directly which i'm sure they could probably stand to have a few more leads in the pipeline. Am I right, ladies? Yeah, Always more good. room for leads. <laughs> so let's see. I, 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 I don't got bills to pay. Did, did, uh, I think we started last time first with Heidi. Why don't we go ahead and start? Christy, why don't we start with you? Why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, let everybody know how to get in touch with you. What part of the world are you from? And all that good stuff. Awesome. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Christy, obviously, from Destinations to Travel. My email is christygroovy at d2travel.com. Not groovy. It's groovy. It's not nearly as sexy as groovy. (laughs) G-R-U-B-E. I live in North Carolina. We've been here for probably about 16 years, originally from Maryland. Lived in New York for about 10 years. So I'm an East Coaster, obviously. But uh, drop me a line. Love to help you out. Disney is why I got into this, why I got into travel, because Disney travel is my Mm. passion, my obsession. I'm a Disney dork. Okay. Sweet. That's why I'm here. Awesome. Heidi, how about you? Hey, yo, I'm Heidi Estep. My um, email address, Heidi Estep at d2travel.com, is a great way to get in touch with me. I, um, goodness, I've been doing this for uh, just over a year and change. Um, and I'm from Pennsylvania, originally from Virginia. And I, Disney is my thing. Like it's uh, just kind of live, breathe. Everything is Disney for me. And, you know, don't apologize for it. We just love it, right? <laughs> so, Never apologize. Yeah. yeah. No, Never no, apologize. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we appreciate you guys so much coming on as often as you do. And I got to say, uh, hey, you could tell every time you guys come on, you're, 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 you're like hitting it and you're awesome. And we love having you here. Uh, we enjoy having you on every time. And we just want to say thank you. Um, <laughs> Did I miss something? I'm booklet. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. 
Talk about the throat. Don't cry. Okay. Uh, so uh, make sure that you reach out to these uh, folks. Uh, they're giving their time to us uh, to help you guys. So if you're going to try to book some planning uh, for vacation, reach out to these two lovely ladies. They will help you out. And for those of you who are like, well, I like to plan my own travel. That's great. They will help you to whatever degree that you want because they will also help you find ways to save money time and mainly frustration and it's so much better to have them uh helping you working with you uh than if you decide not to and go it alone and then you get into trouble you're only going to be able to talk to so many people at disney but these uh folks can really help you out so uh that's uh that's what i would like to encourage you to do trust me i've, I've been on the recent that <laughs> to prove our point they're going to talk about three offers that you may not know about Mm-hmm. So. All right, so Uncle Tony, how are we? Uh, how are we going to do this? Yeah, so uh, I know there's the three current. Uh, there's probably more than three, but let's talk about at least these three. Uh, one was called a "Spring into Magic." Save up to thirty percent on rooms at select Disney resorts. So, what is that um, offer all about? Anybody? Anybody? It is booked now, like okay. right now, through May 27th. Ooh, so Save it is them. now. Yeah, yeah. TikTok, peeps. TikTok. It uh, it's for it's for most nights, April 18th through July 10th. And okay. you can save up to 30%. I mean, those room percentage promotions, we don't see all the time. It's yeah. a pretty sweet deal. So you're staying deluxe, right? Thirty oh, up to 30% off. That's... You know, some of those percentages can be the difference between room tiers. You always wanted to stay moderate. You always wanted to stay deluxe. Right. Having a percentage off can kind of be the the leveling of the playing field a bit for somebody who maybe wanted to try a different category of resort this time around. So it's a pretty sweet deal. Yeah. And these are for stays up until July, right? July 10th. Okay. Correct. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, get in that summer vacation trip. Yeah, so book now, and then you can stay anytime between now and July 10th, so that's good. Right, uh, yeah. The next one on the list is the get two extra days added to your ticket on select four-night, three-day room and ticket packages. That makes Easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. So you get two extra days on your mm-hmm. ticket if you stay four nights and three days with a room and ticket package. Okay. Yeah. I think I get that. Yeah. So what is, what are some of the details on that? Um, well, I can tell you, I can speak from sure. experience. I just had guests go last week and originally they had planned to just spend I, just a few days in the parks. They weren't going to be there for, I think they were going to be there for five nights mm-hmm. and they they originally weren't going to worry about going to the parks the day that they arrived and the day that they left. And it worked out for them that they were actually able to save some money by taking advantage of the deal. And they were able to get the extra park days as well. So when they arrived early on their arrival day, they were able to go right to the parks and then their departure day, they actually were flying out super late. And so they enjoyed the parks again, the day that they left. So it was super, um, convenient for them. And I mean, they save money and we're able to do more time at the parks. I think that's a win. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's that sounds good. So. Uh, Laura is asking in the chat, uh, if these are, uh, Walt Disney world or Disneyland, I think these are just Walt Disney world, uh, offers, yeah. uh, the ones we're talking right. about. I don't think yeah. Disneyland has anything going right now because they're technically not open. Right. Hopefully soon now. Yeah. Let's roll out some yeah. promos. That'd be awesome. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then the last one is uh, I thought an interesting one. This is stay under the stars in the magic uh and save twenty percent on campsites this spring. So uh what is Disney trying to tell us to do? Ditch the hotel and get a camper? <laughs> Well, I mean, think about there's probably still some people that are maybe still a little afraid to travel and maybe a little creeped out by the resorts, which they shouldn't be. The cleaning is fantastic. They're all over it. But say you've got, you know, this swanky RV or you've got, you know, this amazing tent, maybe. I don't know. But here you don't have to be right on top of people. You don't have to rely on mousekeeping to do your sanitizing. 
You yeah. can save up to 20% on a campsite. And that goes through from April 11th. So coming up on that through May 27th. So before okay. it gets <laughs> stupid hot, yeah. go camping. Yeah. Yep. There are a couple places here in Orlando that will actually bring an RV to your campsite, okay. set it all up, uh, and then uh, walk away. And, uh, you and know, they, do they clean it up afterwards? Yeah, like yeah. The pond then stuff? They, yeah, then they, wow. yeah, they'll come in, uh, you know, haul it away. I think, uh, That's I think cool. it includes some chairs, uh, includes, I think, a carpeting, like for outdoor, uh, area. Um, you can also I, run a golf cart. Yep. You can run yeah. A golf cart. But the campsites are cool. Yeah. I mean, they've got restaurants over there, they've got a yeah. shop. I mean, it's, it's not like you're out in the middle of nowhere. It's still Disney. It's, yeah. it's a pretty sweet area. You're built right away. Yeah. yeah. From yeah. right away yeah. from the kingdom. Yeah. Not and bad. from what I heard, if you are staying in a tent tent uh, without your own uh, facility, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the I've heard the restrooms and shower areas are immaculate. So right. uh, yeah. if you have a, you know, thing about, you know, a clean bathroom and shower it's glamping yeah yeah this is not uh koa campgrounds <laughs> no. yeah. oh now you've offended somebody at koa camp i'm sure i'm sure yep. i have i'm sure i have that's Cue what the we do. Yep. uh so here's the offer i'm gonna make uh everybody out there uh if you book a trip with uh, one of these two ladies christy or heidi uh and you book it and you actually execute the trip i'm not just saying book it and then cancel it Book it and actually go. Uh, I have a, I think it's a four piece set of Disney luggage that I will send you. So, uh, it, you know, call one of them or email them, tell them it was Disney Parks podcast. And uh, if I, you know, hear that you did that and then you executed your trip, we'll, uh, we'll send you luggage. How's that? Awesome. That's right. So, nice. I'm a excited we're about gonna, that. We're gonna, sweet, we're gonna sweeten the deal. <laughs> Sweeten the deal. That's right. so. And that luggage is is uh, graciously provided by Destinations of Travel, Correct. too. So yes. Thanks to them. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when do you see, have you heard any rumblings? When do you see Disneyland actually starting to open up some of the resorts? Where, I mean, I know the rumors that we've been hearing is that we should start to be able to book. Rumor, rumor, rumor. That we should start to be able to book hopefully like in the next week or so yeah. hopefully or at least you know we're just looking at a couple of weeks it's just a matter of yeah. kind of fine-tuning everything over there but right, right. that what we're hearing is it's eminent which is such a relief yeah, yeah. right yeah uh, i think we are i think the california Go is going to open first right end of april yeah. Yeah. Hotel will follow uh, afterwards yeah don't you well, love when they give the at a later date. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> and for me, I think the Disneyland Hotel is a lot nicer than I mean the Grand Floridian is nice, but I like the Disneyland because it was the OG. There's yeah. a bunch of reminiscence memory things. There's a whole <laughs> Disneyland Mickey Mouse memory wall in there. Um just all so, nostalgic. Yeah. So yeah. very nostalgic. Uh I like the monorail pool. I'm a monorail fanatic so i like yeah. that yeah, there's a lot of things uh at the disneyland hotel that i did like i did like the bar at the california <laughs> i was go. i was known to fall asleep after a cocktail after an expo uh, after being in I've an expo for you do hours. That. Yeah. <laughs> he was there and he was out like a light oh um, you got right on intervention Talks amongst yourselves. I was sleeping. <laughs> Drink himself. He had like half of a cocktail. It was in a super comfy chair, and we were at D23, and we're all just sitting there talking. And next thing we know, we hear. <laughs> we look at oh, no. uh, yeah. Hey, so I know you guys can't see uh, the chat room, but I did want to share this because this is pretty cool. Uh, Christina. Caustic Smith, Caustic Smith. Yep. Uh, she writes for the guys, blog. Yep. You guys are amazing. Yep. Yeah. And then Stephanie Schreffler said, love working with Heidi and hoping to book another yeah. trip soon. So yep. Thanks, there you Stephanie. go. Uh, Stephanie, you should book a trip right now. Get some luggage, lady. Get some luggage. 
And it's like <laughs> Disney luggage. It's like Mickey and Minnie, like yeah, Mickey Mouse yeah. luggage. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not like Mickey Mouse. You can poke Disney. some holes and take Heidi with you. <laughs> yes. <That's> right. <laughs> I like That's that. Right. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've had some questions answered, and we're looking for some uh, questions from the uh, chat room. So, Tony, there's nothing else we can do but get into the news. <laughs> and now, Disney Parks Podcast News. It's a four-way news All around. Right. <laughs> uh anyway we've got uh, a new look in the works for the main street confectionery at the magic kingdom uh that's why disney is delighted to share that this iconic location will soon receive a fresh new look uh, an expanded layout with more room to shop and interactive opportunities to customize your confections like never before. Uh, so to bring these concepts to life, both Main Street Confectionery and the Chapeau uh, will close for refurbishment later on this month. Along with that, some of the merchandise and goodies will be shifting to other spots in the park. But don't worry, you still have the opportunity of options to satisfy your sweet tooth once uh, work to transform the location kicks off on March 29th. So I guess that's today as we're recording this. Uh, many of the treats from Main Street Confectionery will be available at the Emporium and Main Street Cinema during the closure and have no worries about where to find your favorite Disney hats, including the must-have Mickey Mouse ears. Those will be just across the street at the box office gifts at the Town Square Theater. So finally, if you're looking for collectibles and artwork, uh, Bonjour Village Gifts will be the new go-to spot. I guess that's back next to um, Be Our Guest and Gaston's, right? I think so. The Bonjour Village Restaurant is French, and that's the only place it would be. Anyway, uh, so that's the new go-to spot for the artwork. Uh, so should be sure to keep an eye out on the enhancements and more in the coming months. So that's exciting. We're getting expanded confectionery. Uh, mm-hmm. and we're, we're losing the hat place, but we, we can still get them now, so that's great. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't uh, pay attention to the internet last week, uh, Disneyland announced an expansion. They're not open, but they're expanding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so on March 25th, uh, Disneyland Resort uh, filed an application with the city of Anaheim, Anaheim to begin the process of updating uh, their existing development approvals to start and lay the groundwork for future development and expansion in the decades decades to follow. Uh, oh. These updated approvals will allow for future flexibility and the opportunity for more integrated experiences to be built and located throughout the Disneyland Resort property. Although the Disneyland Resort currently has the development approvals to build additional theme park attractions, hotel rooms, entertainment, retail, dining, shopping, and parking, our existing development approvals severely limit the ways in which we can expand and locate offerings. That is why they launched the website DisneylandForward.com, which is a multi-year public planning effort with the city of Anaheim to update development approvals that meet the current and future demands in entertainment. With these updated approvals, Disneyland Resort will continue to be an industry leader in bringing the first of a kind, first of a kind offerings to Anaheim, which in turn will create thousands of new jobs and help support Anaheim funding for important services such as fire, police, and public schools. Uh, while there are no specific plans to share at this time, they did kind of share some stuff. Go check the website yeah. out. Uh, <laughs> the possibilities for the future are nearly endless. Uh, other Disney theme parks around the world are induce, uh, introducing new magic like Zootopia, currently under construction at Shanghai Disneyland, Tangled, and frozen themed lands at Tokyo Disney Seas. With more flexibility and planning, projects like these could be uh, se- uh, severe as in- uh, serve as, if I can read tonight. Serve as inspiration as Disney Imagineers dream up what's possible for the Disneyland Resort. It is important to know that the Disneyland Resort is not seeking 
any public funding in the effort and is not seeking to develop any additional square footage or hotel rooms beyond what is already allowed. We will be working with the city and community to update existing approvals to allow for the future integration, immersive experiences, and appropriately placed built throughout Disney property. Mm-hmm. So, so the uh, non-expanding expansion? <laughs> it is expanding because if you go look at the maps that they have, uh, there are areas that they want to expand to. And they're showing you like what is currently there and what the future spaces are, uh, like where parking garages might be, where parks expansions might be. Uh, mm-hmm. So it's kind of a little misleading uh, if you look at these maps that they have laid out on the website. So uh, DisneylandForward.com is the site. Uh, if you live in or around the Anaheim area, you can become a like a community person to help uh, Disneyland get the word out, have community meetings and things like that. So they are really trying to make this a community effort. You know, we had a Patreon show. You know, we think they're struggling with the current Anaheim board. Uh, so this is kind of their way of just reaching out to the community and saying, hey, listen, you know, this is what we want to do, uh, you know, and this is how you can help us do it. So nice. we'll see. Yeah, it'll be very interesting how this all so, uh, plays out in the future. Yeah. People don't need to park at, well, at uh, Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> right. Right. Uber in. <laughs> At Uber in. Yep. Uber ride share. Ride yeah. sharing. That's not, that's not <laughs> Yep. Uh, exactly. And this is this is a story that the uh, you ladies might be able to help us out with. The Disneyland theme park ticket update. Mm. Uh, stick. Okay. I I love Disneyland. I hate reading news stories from Disneyland because they're just it's crazy. <clears throat> Unused non promotional single day tickets whew, will expire on December thirtieth of twenty twenty one. Or March 31st of 2022 will have the expiration date extended to December 30th of 2022. Holy unused (laughs) non-promotional multi-day tickets that expire on January 12th, 2022 or April 13th, 22 will have the expiration date extended to January 12th of 2023. And the ticket will expire 13 days after the first use or on January 12th, 2023, whichever occurs first. Do I need a lawyer for this? Well, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, hang on. We're not yet. I need guess. a map, like a vision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, guess, guess with multiple ticket. De- okay, no. <laughs> guess with multi-day tickets. <laughs> guess with multi-day tickets who used their first visit between February twenty eighth, twenty twenty, and March thirteenth, twenty twenty, but did not reach their ticket's maximum number of uses. Will have the 13 day expiration period for their ticket extended to December 30th of 2022. Expiration dates on eligible tickets will be updated prior to the theme parks reopening. Okay. So I think, and in, in, in <laughs> Christy, Heidi, correct me if I'm wrong. If you went to Disneyland prior to the pandemic, and you had a multi-day ticket, and you did not use all the multi-day ticket tickets. You didn't use all your tickets. They're extending the time in which you can use them. Does that, does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah. That's what it sounds like. Why didn't they just say that? <laughs> you know, here, go to because the Because a lawyer said there were too many loopholes oh, in that statement. That <laughs> right. <laughs> you yeah. could drive a truck for that statement, John. <laughs> Just come on in. Yeah. We're expanding. <laughs> yeah. So I, I will say this. If you have unused park tickets, depending on if they're multi-day or whatever day type tickets you have, or you only use partial or you only used one day or whatever, check with Disneyland. Yeah. Do check you guys have the ability to check uh, the validity of a ticket? Like if I had a, it would be a phone call. That would be a phone right. call with yeah. the ticket okay. number information. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean it's not something that we can just go on. Like in my Disney experience yeah. for Disney World, right. we can mm. 
pull that stuff up and see what expiration dates are. All right. Right. But for Disneyland, it's it's a phone call, but Yeah. Okay. That's what we yeah. live yeah. for. Yeah. Yes. And why don't they build yeah. a system a travel agent system for you to just put in the numbers and at least find out the expiration date for the customer? Oh, for sure. Well, I mean, sense. it would save a lot of headache on the Disney end, I would think. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And and I'll I'll say this just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Please don't call these two amazing travel planners or any <laughs> destination of travel just to check your park ticket availability. <laughs> But if you want to book your travel, call these yes. people. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll bundle those tickets. And then in. ask them about your ticket. Yes, right. <laughs> I know there's some truck out there going, well, I will see my tickets. Okay. But <laughs> hey, I heard you on that Disney Parks podcast. I want to check my ticket. Do you have a plan? Yeah. Do you have a vacation plan? Hell no! I was just calling to check my ticket prices. We still good? No, please don't do that, folks. But if you're planning a vacation or already have one book, call away. Right. Yes. Please do. Yeah. yeah, that's a good yeah. disclaimer. Right. Yes. Yeah, 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 Thank you for that. Disclaimer. Yeah. Well, I was a, I was a, I was in the travel industry for a few years, and I had, I bumped into a couple of those issues, and I'm like, oh God, why did we say that? No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I we were doing a we were doing a, something similar to this, and the tr- the the travel planner who had her phone number on the screen said, "Yeah, I could check those tickets for you. Just give me a call." Well, oh. she was not expecting people to follow up with her on that, and they called. Wow! And uh, they were just call- literally. She's like, "I would love to help you, but if you're not booking travel, they call Disneyland or call Disney yourself." Right. You know? Yeah. So, yep. and he, go ahead, T. I'm yep. sorry. Yep. No, it's good. It's good. Uh, hopefully, this is the last time we have to talk about this, but Disney uh, revealed the Florida license plate, uh, and now <laughs> they actually put out a, a picture of what it's going to look like, so that was cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least I can see what my new license plate's going to look like. Uh, so, uh, this is the world's most magical celebration, which they're talking about the 50th, which begins on October 1st. Uh, and if you live in Florida, you can get now a Disney license plate. Uh, I think that is the first time in forever, uh, they've done that. Um, Mm. and Disney, it made this design iridescent. That's the word they're (laughs) using for the 50th, uh, which is a castle logo on a majestic royal blue background. Very much like the colors they're using to redo the entrance signs. So Mm -hmm. that that blue and that iridescent is what is going to be on the license plate. Um, So this will be what they're calling a magical plate. I don't know what magic it's going to perform. Uh, is it currently available for pre-sale and will help make uh, even more dreams come true with 100% of the proceeds benefiting mm. Make-A-Wish Foundation. So you're, none of the money is going to Disney or the state of Florida or the county. It's all going to Make-A-Wish. Uh, and the Northern yeah. Florida uh, is... Um, working on uh, granting wishes uh, for children and uh, life-threatening medical conditions. Now, if you are interested, you have to purchase a pre-sale voucher. Uh, It's only $25 for this plate, which, if you come from New Jersey, that's cheap. Uh, (laughs) Apical State admission (laughs) fees exclusively through their local county tax collector. So you have to go to to your local county tax tax collector collector in your county, wherever you live, in the entire state. Um, And uh, if you want more information, you can uh, visit your local uh, tax collector's website. Uh, Like here in Orange County, it's octaxcol.com forward slash specialty hyphen license hyphen plate hyphen voucher. Trust me, if you just go to the Orange County site, <laughs> you'll, you'll, you'll get to it. It's a lot. Yeah. Uh, now, here's the trick. They need a minimum of 3,000 crazy Disney fans to do this in order to make these license plates. So if you're interested, get the pre-voucher. Because if you don't get the pre-voucher, 
it's not going to happen. So they have to have 3,000 of these pre-vouchers uh, in order to make the plate. So uh, I... I can't imagine that would be tough. No? I mean, no. isn't that... I, I think would think you that could would be blow a rock and hit 3,000 Disney fans, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. You got to yeah. think it would be easy. That was my thought. Yeah. 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 Uh, like that it seems like a low number to me. I, it seems yeah. extremely low when I saw it. It's like 3,000. That In the whole it's state? Nothing. Right. Yeah. 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 I know. Uh, if you want more information about the 50th, besides asking these two fun ladies or emailing them. Uh, you can go to disneyworld.com forward slash 50. So they made that website actually easy to get to. <laughs> so, Turn it. Nice. Yeah. There's that, no that, go that, dot com dot gov. <laughs> yeah, that's really different. I mean, that's, that's, that's way different for yeah. most Disney stuff. So that's cool. Uh, are you? Uh, I, I'm thinking about getting one. I know you're going to get one, right? I have mine already. I have my voucher. What's to think about? As you're, as you're, what's the what's to think I about? Know. I don't know. Do I yeah. I, now so, okay. I have to think oh, about getting uh, it personalized. What about the children? Yeah. What about the children, John? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you're, yes, you're helping the children and you're advertising for Disney for free. Uh, well, not really. Play. It's just a castle. It could be anybody's castle. It doesn't have to be a Disney <laughs> castle. It's your oh castle. It's whatever you want yeah. it to be. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'll get Do my, it. I'll get my no peer pressure or anything, yeah. kids. Oh, you thought you were getting out of peer pressure when you grew out of uh, childhood. Nope. Mm. Anyway. Uh, John, John, John. <laughs> get the plate. Get the plate. Get the plate. Get the plate. <laughs> 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 You want the license plate, John. Get the license plate. Okay, Satan. I'll do it. Uh, all right. So, uh, earlier this evening, Tony and I recorded our Patreon shows that you can only hear on our Patreon page. This is over at DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon. Uh, if you're a patron, you get up to three shows extra a week. Plus, there's a uh, a really cool way that if if you're donating however much money to support the show, uh, you get some kickbacks. You get some rewards from us. And if you like the Disney uh, by the Numbers T-shirt club, uh, there's a way that you can support the show. Get all three episodes that you can't hear anywhere else. And get a Disney by the Numbers t-shirt club sent directly to your door each month. You don't have to do anything. Done. Uh, and now Patreon allows us to offer a pay annually and save 10% on top of that. And then to sweeten the deal even more, we're throwing it in luggage. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and expire if, park tickets. Yeah. If you sign up or if you level up, Meaning, if you go from five dollars to ten dollars, uh, we're going to send you a, uh, a hand embroidered Pixar hat. It's a custom hat that we had made, uh, so we're going to nice. send you one of those. And it's uh, it's awesome. It's it's a great way if you like the show and you're looking for some more content. If you're going to the gym or, or commuting, whatever it is you're doing now that we're commuting again, uh, Disney Parks Podcast over on Patreon is a great way to get some more content. Uh, we love and we're so appreciative of our patrons because of what they do. Uh, they that allows us to do really cool things like uh, something that Tony's going to be talking about in a little bit. Um, plus, we've got some other events that we're wanting to do that helps us with that. So, please, if you if you like what we're doing, go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash Patreon. Sign up to be a Patreon and uh, get all of that great content, all the rewards, and maybe even a really cool Disney t-shirt and a Pixar hat. So, uh, check us out. Yeah, sounds good. Go ahead. Uh, oh, yeah. So meetups. Uh, May 29th, we're going to an AM AMC theater. Uh, it's going to be limited to 20 people. It's on us. We're going to pick hope maybe a Disney movie. Hopefully, they got something playing uh, in May, and uh, it'll be on us. So join us for that. Uh, more details of how to reserve your spot uh, coming soon, as soon as we get the movie picked. Uh, mm -hmm. And then August 7th, we're going to Ravello, which is at the Four Seasons for a character breakfast. That's Goofy and Pal. So it's Mickey, Minnie, and Goofy. Uh, it is excellent food and excellent character experience. Well, it's as good as it can get during a pandemic. 
Let's say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and then December 11th, we are doing our monorail crawl. That's the uh, Christmas crawl. We now dubbed it, and uh, we'll go around to uh, all the deluxe resorts and drink and look at Christmas trees. So come and join us for that. So plan your trips around that if you can. Yeah, you guys should come do that. That's pretty fun. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, Watch Tony it's, fall asleep at all the deluxe bars. No, no. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> I'm there. That was good. Uh, I, I do have to drive myself home, so. Uh, all right, so trivia. Last week we had some trivia, which was Bo Peep is a reoccurring character in all three Toy Story movies. True or false? Uh. Uh. Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Well, the question is not correct, but the the answer is false. Yeah, correct. Because there's A, there's four Toy Story movies. Right. And she was not in three. Right. Correct. Ha! You are a <laughs> Disney fanatic, John. Uh, no, I, I'm uh, good friends with a Toy Story fanatic. fanatic. Uh, all right, so the winner was Phyllis. Uh, Phyllis, I just got your email with your address, so I'll put the little prize in the mail to you. Uh, this week's a trivia question is this. Why is Charles Muntz living in South America? So this is the, from the movie Up, if you need to figure that out. <laughs> it's it's, it's one extradition country, and apparently he's done something that he thinks he's going to get extradited for. <laughs> <laughs> pretty close, pretty close. Good one. Uh, good guess, good guess. <laughs> if you think you know the right answer or want to just send in John's answer, uh, send it to <laughs> Disney Parks Podcast at gmail.com. All right. It's a little dark for a Disney movie, but hey, you never know. That's a tough movie. Uh, yeah. Before we go, before we go uh, in the next one, there's a question about the license plates that yeah. I'd like to go ahead and answer. Stephen was asking what characters do they have on the license plate. None. Yeah. It's a castle. That's castle. it. You know, yeah. you can choose and apparently your character. anyone's castle, according it to be it. Could be anyone's castle. It could be <laughs> yep. uh, Timmy's castle, but it's just yeah. the castle. That's it. There's no characters. Yeah. <laughs> Think of it like Shanghai. Like it could be anybody's castle. Yeah, that's true. Clouds, big fluffy yeah. clouds. Blue. All right. I can't believe that hasn't here. been a thing before. The whole license plate thing. How are you guys just now getting a Disney license plate? I, I know. Florida. I, I it's crazy. I I asked when I moved down here, I'm like, you know, what kind of Disney place? And they're like, What? No, nothing. None. That's nuts. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It is. Yep. Uh, I'm yeah. glad they're remedying that. Yeah, I'm glad they're doing it for the right. 50th. Yeah. Man. Uh, okay, so, uh, oh God, I'd love when you give me these stories. <laughs> Facial recognition technology is being tested at Walt Disney World. Yay. So, uh, Walt Disney Resort, uh, they're always looking for innovative and convenient ways to improve their guests' experience, especially as they navigate through the impact of COVID 19. Mm -hmm. Uh, it has to do with facial recognition, but okay. With the future in mind and the shift in focus to more touchless experiences, Disney is conducting a limited 30-day test using facial recognition technology. Uh, this technology that's being tested captures an image of a guest's face and converts it into a unique number, which is then associated with the, the form of admission being used to enter the park. Is that like a sleep number? <laughs> yes, my uh, uh, John, it looks like it looks like you have a forty-five Maybe. as a face. <laughs> I thought I'd at least have a nine mil. Uh, anyway, so uh, uh, participation in the test is optional for now. Uh, for those interested in volunteering to participate. Uh, make sure that you arrive to the theme park with valid theme park admission and a Disney park pass reservation. Here's what you can expect. Uh, step one, 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 one. Bring your face. You can bring, <laughs> <laughs> bring your face. Uh, you, enter, you enter the facial recognition technology test lane. 
Is that I am wearing shot? a mask, though, right? So am I? Yes. Is, yes. Is, yes. You are yes. wearing a mask. Yeah. Mask when you're ready, enter, yeah. When you're ready to enter the park, simply enter the lane designated for the test program. Step two. Remove accessories, but keep your face covered at all times. <laughs> Please take off any hats, visors, sunglasses, anything that would obscure your lovely visage before you like approach a face the- mask. No, face mask stays on. <laughs> How dare you? Are you trying to keep the entire down? Hey, I love face uh, mask. Before you approach the facial recognition test zone, your face covering must remain on at all times. <laughs> Step three. Now, this might sound crazy, but face the camera. Oh, no. <laughs> really? That is, that's fascinating <laughs> stuff. Anyway, where is it at? Anyway, um, so once the facial rec- uh, recognition test, once you're in the facial recognition test zone, stand facing the camera and then position your valid park admission or magic band close to the scanner. And that <laughs> activates the technology. <laughs> the we are technology never getting control. into the parks again. <laughs> it's well, never, I can't even get my technology. finger to do it on the finger thing. I'm dead. <laughs> no, well, I got we got something to say about that. Hang on just yeah. a second. The technology will capture an image. Uh, and then will be converted into a neat, a unique number that is associated to your valid ticket media. You're all set. That sounds so quick and easy. Yeah. If you return to the Magic Kingdom Park during our limited test time, consider entering the same designated entry points. Re-entering through the te- same lane helps us better understand how the technology works. You mean to tell me that you're doing all this and you don't understand how the technology works? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why they're testing it. No, yes. they <laughs> They have to know how the technology works or else they wouldn't be in a position where they could be testing it. How to Dude. better understand it. You mean to tell me they haven't been testing this for years? Wow. That, Dude, that's 10 years ago, I was watching Person of Interest. Don't talk to me about face recognition. <laughs> Listen, they've been capturing your face uh, since 9-11. Yes. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the weird thing that I saw was that the camera was pretty tall. I would probably say it like... Five, 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 seven. Yeah, that's tall. Yeah, I, I'm thinking it's not going to take my picture. It's going to shoot over I'm my head. Need a boost. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then I'm thinking to myself, well, what about kids? Because no kid is going to get to that camera height. Uh, and then uh, what about like people in wheelchairs and you know all, all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff? I said, so I'm thinking this is just a test. But they're going to have to have stations where they're going to have to have lower ones. So, you know, kids right. and, you know, uh, <laughs> you're shaking your head now? No, the field of vision on those cameras is much wider than you think. You think it's going to shoot mean, down and get my face? Well, look ah. at the cameras. We're using, look at the cameras we're using right now. Mm-hmm. You know, if they set the top of the camera to six and a half feet, which is roughly the average sight of a normal human being. And then the top of my desk is two and a half feet. So from from here to here, mm-hmm. most people are going to fit into that. Yeah. And they're not going to be testing little kids anyway because they don't have to be. They don't have to have uh, all that stuff. They can't, you know. So, no, I think that the field of vision on those cameras is so wide. It might be very skinny, mm-hmm. but the field of vision is so wide, it'll, it'll catch all that. Or the camera head simply go and move to where your face is. Start scanning for a body. <laughs> yeah, which would be great. You know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What could go wrong? We'll have to see. What could go wrong? Nothing. Trust us. No. Trust yeah. us. We're professionals. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I really want to one day just send a letter to Disney and go. Can you send me a copy of all the information you have about me? Not, <laughs> not, not the emails, uh, and letters that I write. Just the other yeah. data that you have about me. How many trees 
churros have I consumed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know what I've written you. I just want to know what you have about yeah. me. <laughs> the problem tell you that it's not your inf- it's their information. It's not you're not able to access that information. I would argue that my it's information is my information. My face <laughs> is my face. <laughs> yeah. Such <laughs> as it is. <laughs> I uh I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of any I'm not a fan of any of this. I struggle with the biometric thing, but mm. you know, it's just the way that we're going yeah. in society and I don't I don't you yeah. know, I can't live out in the field and be a hermit. I gotta go ride my roller coaster. So mm-hmm. you know Well yeah. well you saw the woman yeah. that took the magic band uh chip and put it in her hand, right? <gasps> yeah. What? Yeah, there was no. a woman that took uh, the oh, chip God. part of the magic band and buried it underneath her skin. Ew! Oh, so that she only had to tap her wrist or her hand against the the magic band reader. Because that was a better oh, option than just wearing the magic band. <laughs> the cute oh, magic yeah. band. Come on! I want to know oh. what she was going to do when the battery went dead. I know. <laughs> and that's why there is yeah. now a warning on the box from the magic band saying uh this is uh got to be implanted. For, yeah. yeah. Don't have in your skin. Yeah. Yeah. Do not yeah. swallow or implant. Uh, it's just Oh my gosh. gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, Things that you would never be good. Thought you had to say. Nope. Maybe you could uh swallow it and then you could just put your belly button up against it. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least for a couple hours. Excuse me, sir. What are you doing? I, I need to, I need to belly bump the uh, magic band. Oh Lord! Oh. I need to belly bump the magic that. band holder. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Let me get this out. Hang on. We're, try- <laughs> we're trying to do it. Oh God. We're, we're talking about the tiny. We're trapped. This is Tony Casanova. Can you tell me where is where he is right now? Right now he's in the sewer somehow. How is he in the sewer? Oh no! He must have expelled his magic band. He must have made a corn dog. Oh god. Anyway, yeah. so that's the world we live in, kids. Yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah. hey, uh, are we going on to the next thing? Yeah. How about a little headline news? And now, the headline news. Oh, so right. for those of you, for, hang on. Uh, for those of you who have never been with us and, uh, and for our friends from Destination to Travel, we just popped through the headlines. This is a quick little recap of some of the headlines uh, coming out from Disney this we want to let you know, but we didn't want it to go into too far, sir. So hit it with it. Hit it with it, T. Uh, the Rainbow Connection, the song, Muppet Song, was honored by the National Recording Registry of the Library of Congress. Did it have a warning label, too? Yes. That, <laughs> this song will make you green. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our friends over at Box Lunch... Uh, now has a brand new collection of Mickey's Runaway Railway everything. Backpacks, mm. shirts, lanyards, coffee cups, everything runaway. I'm like, why isn't this not in the Disney parks? But I don't know. Crazy. They uh, gave it all to Box Lunch, and that's uh, where it sits right now. Uh, Copper Creek increased their sold out uh, prices. So they've been creeping up the price over at Boulder Creek DVC. Uh, just went up another five dollars a point. So I'm thinking if you want a DVC, you should start getting one because I have a feeling once this pandemic starts to go on the downside, uh, Disney's gonna really start raising their prices and take advantage. So I would do it now. Yep. 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 Uh, yep. Disney announced that the Disney Magic is resuming sailing this summer. I don't know about that yet. This summer out of points, uh, ports in England, and we don't mean New England, we mean the other England across the pond, England. Yes. You know so, who's not going to be on those ships? What? You know who's not going to be sailing on those ships? U.S. citizens. <laughs> Meghan Markle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, her too. Oh. So I guess if they are going out of England, I guess 
it could happen during the summer because our CDC said no, not until the fall. So yeah. that is possible. Um, we kind of spoke about this. Uh, they put up some new photos about the uh, new LED lighting uh, at the Chinese theater over at the studios. If you get a chance, head over to the blog and take a look at those. They really did a great job uh, lighting that up, and uh, the LED lighting really makes that uh, place pop. I have a feeling my suspicion is it's going to get painted because now the LED lighting brings out all the old paint. <laughs> so I have a feeling it'll get painted by the 50th. Yeah. Hopefully. And then uh, I think you guys can help us with this one. So CLIA, CLIA, is asking the CDC to lift the conditional sale order. Now, the CLIA is the uh, travel agent certification or license part? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I think the CDC is still saying October, or the, no, they're calling it fall, and we don't know what that means, right? Fall. Mm. Uh, wow, I know, and I've heard others say November, too. Yeah, I've heard that, too. Uh, I know our governor is pissed because he needs and wants port money. Uh, back, back <laughs> yeah, rightfully so. Yeah. I mean, and, it's yeah. these poor cruise lines are yeah, it, it's dying a, out there. Yeah, it's a whole revenue stream that yeah. is mm -hmm. not being uh, used right now. And when we say port, we're not talking the wine. We're talking the place where ships go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so glad you clarified. Yes. <laughs> uh, if you are an Animal Kingdom fan, uh, it is Earth Month, and they have a bunch of special <laughs> events. Uh, I highly suggest that you head over to Disney Parks Blog or Disney World website. Uh, they have a list of some of the up upcoming events mm -hmm. that are happening there. So go check those out. Um, there are new sensors now at the People Mover, and I. Didn't get any more information of like what they're sensing, but there are new sensors <laughs> and uh, cast members are being tr retrained. Uh, so apparently this is the new delay of why the people mover is not open. And it's been down a year, probably one of the longest rehabs for that simple attraction with electric magnets. But anyway. probably new fire sensors. <laughs> this is what happens when we catch on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I've been uh I've been evac'd off of that. Has anybody else been evac'd off of that? Yeah, yeah. I think everybody, I, I think everybody's got a story about that. Mm. Um, and oh, this is a good one. Go to DisneyCareers.com. They are hiring a principal firework designer. I saw. Oh, so so cool. anybody got their boom boom license? Uh, Sarah does tell her to go look tell her to yeah. go look now I'm hoping that this is stuff for the 50th that they need a new designer uh, maybe Harmonious something at the Magic Kingdom something for the 50th event some kind of fireworks keep please <laughs> keep dreaming buddy <laughs> something boom boom in the sky please <laughs> Something. <laughs> Hire somebody. Get this going, please, so that we get fireworks back. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I don't. That it's got to be a pretty good paying job, I would assume, right? You have to be licensed in the state, well, right? Yeah, you have to blow stuff up. Got to, got to make some bucks for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting that they're hiring a fireworks designer. I mean, didn't they have one prior to the pandemic, or did they let him go? And well, they probably let them, right. they probably let that person go. Yeah, and yeah. that person went somewhere else and said, "Well, I'm not coming back." Yeah, <laughs> I'm at Universal. I'm getting paid actual money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, I got Mario Land to blow up now. Yeah, so. yeah exactly. <laughs> Every night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 